Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon and, uh, and welcome. Uh, my name is Ed Schlesinger. I'm the Benjamin T. Rome Dean of the Whiting School of Engineering. Uh, and it is a great pleasure to welcome you all to the installation of Ralph Etienne Cummings as the Julian S. Smith Professor. Uh, thank you all for being here today to celebrate this special occasion. Uh, first, I would like to offer a special welcome to today's honoree, Ralph Etienne Cummings, his wife, Shamita, uh, his mother, Margarita, and his son, Blaze. Uh, welcome. Uh, in addition, we're very honored to have uh, uh, Provost Sunil Kumar to join us today to help with this imp important celebration and recognition. Also joining us from the University of Pennsylvania is Ralph's mentor, uh, Jan van der Spiegel, Professor of Electrical Systems Engineering in the School of Engineering and Applied Science. Uh, welcome, there you are. <laughs> welcome to Johns Hopkins and thank you for joining us today. Um, I'd also like to recognize uh, Ralph's undergraduate mentor, who is with us today. Welcome. Um, although they could not be here with us in person, uh, we know that there are members of the Smith family uh, who are watching online, and we thank each of them also for being with us here as well. This professorship is named for the late Julian S. Smith by his family to advance and support the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering in his memory. Julian Smith, a Baltimore native, received his bachelor's degree from Johns Hopkins Engineering in 1952. After graduating, his interest in circuitry led to a World War II assignment at the Great Lakes Naval Station, instructing navigators on the intricacies of sonar. After the war, he returned to study electrical engineering at Johns Hopkins University while working as an engineer at WFBRAM one of Baltimore's leading radio stations at the time. And upon his graduation, he worked in aerospace engineering at the Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Laboratory, Martin Marietta, and Fairchild Hiller before becoming interested in the budding ultra high frequency uh, technology in the early 1960s. Convinced that there were other markets beyond the one already served by CBS, NBC, and ABC, Mr. Smith launched WBFF-TV, now known as Fox 45, in 1971. After expanding significantly, Mr. Smith, along with his wife Caroline and sons David, Fred, Duncan, and Rob, founded the Sinclair Broadcast Group, incorporated in 1986. Today, today, Sinclair Broadcast Group, Incorporated, is one of the largest and most diversified television broadcasting companies in the country, reaching approximately 40% of U.S. television households, and includes Fox, ABC, CBS, among others. Today's event would not be possible without the critical investment that the Smith family made in the future of our school and in our ability to effect positive change in the world by allowing us to encourage the work of our most promising faculty, and faculty like Ralph. Now endowed professorships serve our mission of teaching, research, and service in an especially powerful and visible way, combining the permanence of an endowment with what truly makes the university great, its ability to attract the best faculty it can identify anywhere in the world to bring them to Hopkins to ensure that they and their discipline will flourish when they arrive. The faculty members who hold endowed chairs bring luster to the name of Johns Hopkins. They conduct some of our most important research and they frequently attract the brightest and most promising students, those who understandably want to work with acknowledged leaders in their fields. We are proud of the fact that they Johns Hopkins University now boasts almost 300 named professorships, with the Whiting School holding 63. An endowed professorship is a coveted honor and recognition for many faculty members. At the Whiting School of Engineering, endowed professorships and faculty scholar awards play a pivotal role in the academic excellence of the school and the Johns Hopkins University. These awards are made possible thanks to the extraordinary generosity and commitment of people with a demonstrated dedication to learning and discovery. And so to the Smith family, I say we are so very grateful for your generosity 
and commitment to the Whiting School over many years, and especially in this moment. Today, we honor you for creating the Julian S. Smith Professorship. And by establishing the Julian S. Smith Endowed Professorship in Electrical and Computer Engineering, the Smith family ensured an important and vital level of support to Johns Hopkins, the School of Engineering, the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering for many years to come. Thank you again. Now, Ralph, a few people are going to speak on your behalf today, but let me be the first to officially say congratulations on this well-deserved honor and for your leadership in the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering. You have mo most definitely made an indelible mark on the world, and we are proud to have you as a member of the Whiting School family. In addition to his duties as professor and faculty member, Ralph also serves as the Vice Provost for Faculty Affairs. In this role, he is a key contributor to the development and execution of the long-term vision of the Office of the Provost. In acknowledgement of his contributions to the university, we inv have invited Provost Sunil Kumar to say a few words. Sunil. Thank you, Ed, and uh, thank you all for joining. Um, I'm not supposed to be here because traditionally the university representative is only present for the very first time the chair is awarded because the chair has to be formally accepted on behalf of the board of trustees. Now this, the Smith family was generous several decades ago and this chair has been in existence since 1996. But I'd still like to take this opportunity to thank the Smith family for making this gift. And uh, when we accept the chair, we say, you know, this is the most lasting contribution a donor can make to the university because the chairs are here forever and they will perpetually rejuvenate themselves because, you know, different people uh, will get them at different times in, um, in the university's history. And today is an example of that. Um, it's, it's not a one and done gift. In fact, there is no divorce. There will always be a Smith chair at, in the School of Engineering and somebody like Ralph will have it. So, so thank you to the Smith family for that. Um, I wanted to say two other things. Um, uh, first, uh, for me, there is only one reason to make these speeches uh, at the grant of a chair, which is to imbue the recipient with a deep and abiding sense of guilt. <laughs> and uh, there are 300 chairs at Johns Hopkins, there are 4,600 faculty. So you do the math. So these chairs are relatively rare. They are a distinct honor. And they're only given to those people who we know will now feel sufficiently guilty to work harder, <laughs> even though they have tenure. And so, so that is the primary reason to do that. The second reason, of course, is to recognize accomplishment and to reward it. And in my case, I would like to highlight those things that Ralph has done in the provost office in just one year. The first and foremost is he's managed to get a new provost and you know, get an upgrade, which is, I think, a, quite an accomplishment. I have no doubt that my successor will be significantly better than the current in incumbent. Uh, the other two things on a more serious note was he launched the Vivian Thomas, I'm sorry, the Fanny Gaston Johansson program. This is uh, the university's effort to diversify uh, the STEM faculty um, and in some sense, take away the excuses from our past failures. We have not been able to diversify as much as we would have liked to. And in this case, I was simply betting on past performance being an indication of future achievement because Ralph had done this with the EC department and I expected that he would do it for the whole university. As, and he has indeed done so with the first tranche. Now this faculty have not been recruited. And of course, you know that the university will hold you personally responsible if they don't recruit, but, uh, but I'm sure it will succeed going forward. So that's one. He's also been very interested in asking the following question. Why do people leave? Why do faculty leave? 
and he's going about it the right way. So he's created a control group of those who don't leave. <laughs> and we are measuring both of them to see whether we can pick up patterns. And again, something that Ralph led. And the third, and the one I'm most excited about is Ralph is a first rate academic who has always had a foot in industry. And I don't believe you can really be a top engineering school without having connections to the real world. Engineering is supposed to be a prescriptive discipline that interacts with the real world. And, uh, and I'm hoping that he will bring that value uh, to the provost office as a whole and will drive a translation and application agenda for the university as a whole. So lots to do, Ralph. And now that we have, we may not have increased your compensation. We don't, by the way, when we give a chair. Uh, but we have given you a, a, a rare honor, and I know that you will deliver. So with that, I'll turn it over to Pablo Iglesias, the chair of PC. Thank you. Thank you, Sunil. It's uh, my real honor and pleasure to be here on, on behalf of the department and, and to thank you for coming, uh, but also to celebrate the achievements of Ralph. I was, I have been here a long time, so I was present when Ralph interviewed, I believe 25 years ago. And uh, at the time he showed us all kinds of pictures of these robots he, he had with the idea that they were gonna be flying around and sensing uh, things. And uh, it was pretty exciting then. It was very, we were very fortunate when he joined our department. I do have, a small complaint though, Ralph. Uh, and I have to tell you that at the time, several of us would go to the gym and run around the track every lunch. And Ralph said that he was very athletic, well, argued that he was very athletic and that we would like to join us. To the best of my knowledge, Ralph never joined us. <laughs> and I mean, not once. <laughs> but he did work on robots. And if you go, would go to his lab, he had these robots that were running around a treadmill. And I think that that's sort of what he had in mind when he was going to join us. But in all seriousness, um, we've been very fortunate that Ralph joined us in 25, 25 years ago, uh, that he, he went away, but he came back. And, and again, that was fortunate. And, and I'm sure that he's gonna do fabulous things in the provost office like he has for our department. So I, I thank you uh, for friendship 25 years and, and for your service to our department. I'd like to introduce uh, Ralph's uh, uh, PhD mentor uh, from the University of Penn or Pennsylvania, it's Jan van der Spiegel. Thank you, Pablo, for the introduction and welcome everybody, good afternoon. It's a real honor and privilege for me to have the opportunity to participate in this special celebration of Ralph's uh, appointment to the Julian S. Smith uh, Scholarly Chair. So I'm really thrilled to be able to, to be here, Ralph. Uh, also, I'd like to extend my greetings and welcome uh, first to all of you, in particular to the Ralph family, to his wife, Shamita, uh, who, have no, who have known actually when she was a student at Penn in electrical engineering. Uh, so I've known the family for a long time. I'd like to extend also warm welcome to Margareta, uh, who have known also for a long time, and or to Blaise, of course. Uh, in addition, also greetings to the provost and vi vice president, Kumar, and uh, Dean Schlesinger. And of course, all the friends and students who are here. So um, also let me take the opportunity to thank the um, Smith family for their generosity in making this scholarly uh, chair possible. As already was mentioned by the provost and the dean, these chairs actually make the department and university special. And that's what makes them the reputation great. So thank you for your generosity. So as was mentioned, my name is Jan van der Spiegel and I'm a professor of electrical engineering at University of Pennsylvania. I joined Penn in 1981 and my research area is very, was very close to what Ralph has been doing, I would say, a bio-inspired VLSI circuits and, and systems. Um, I had also the pleasure of serving, as was mentioned earlier, to Ralph's uh, PhD uh, advisor. 
as well as his master's uh, thesis. Um, so uh, I still remember when Rolf joined us, I think it was 1988, right? He came from uh, uh, Lincoln University and he uh, wanted to talk to me. So he came to my office. Uh, he was a very, he came over, he struck me as a very intelligent, as enthusiastic person with hair, a lot of hair at that time. <laughs> uh, something changes. Um, he was friendly, outgoing, and self-confident, and that hasn't changed. So Rolf was interested in joining my research group, um, and we had a good chat, and uh, I should find out that actually he was a physicist who knew very little about circuits, uh, even less about what VLSI integrated circuits were about. So that was a little bit of a problem. Of course, as you know, Rolf can be very convincing, so I... Uh, so let me talk to my colleague, late colleague, uh, Sora Prabi, who was at that time the graduate group chair and also in charge of admitting graduate students. And I knew that uh, Rab, uh, Sora was uh, very tough. He all, only admitted the best candidates to the graduate program. So I talked to him and he said, Ralph is coming with a lot of strong credentials and I believe he will become a star student. So I said, OK, let me, uh, I took his word for it. And uh, we had further uh, conversation. And uh, I admitted uh, Rolf to, to the research group. It was a good time because we just started a new project together with my late colleague, uh, Paul Muller of the medical school. So we were going to build what we call a large scale analog neural computer that going to consist of really hundreds of customized chips. And as we all know, the success of faculty depends really on our students, on how they, good they are. So I kept my fingers crossed. So hopefully this is going to work out with Ralf, who is still in the process of learning what transistors are. Um, but it went well, and Ralf learned very quickly, and he put my uh, concerns to rest. Um, he, participating in our groups, he was, as always, very enthusiastic, creative, and played a pretty active role very early on in the group. So he then decided to work and design a neuron, which was one of the critical components of our neural computer. So he designed, uh, it came up with a very, I would say, clever, low power, small, low noise circuit. And it all worked. So that was a very good sign. And I think, Rolf probably will tell you more about that journey, how we came to do this. But after we built the neural network, he stayed on for a few more years and also designed what I would call probably a very unique uh, vision sensor that was modeled after the visual uh, the eye of the fly. So very unique. And so uh, I guess the rest is history. And I will, of course, self, I'm sure he will going to talk more about this. But uh, I do like to take the opportunity uh, to actually, actually uh, Talk about Rolf's accomplishments after he left Penn, and what has made me also so very, very, very proud. So, first of all, I should say that what my uh, colleague Sarab said uh, was really true. Rolf became a star student, and now I think he's a star faculty. So, let me just mention what Rolf has done after he left Penn, and I think he brought the research to an higher level, a new level of, of performance. Yeah. So he went on to developing systems and algorithms of biologically inspired systems, biomorphic robots, closed loop neuroprosthesis, and computer integrated surgical systems and technologies. He became the pioneer in mobile robotics and leg locom locomotion. His recent work has advanced understanding of how interface electronics with the nervous system and how to use biological signals of the, to control biomorphic robots. His demonstration of in vitro, a control of the spinal circuit responsible for locomotion was the first example of artificially generating signals to change the cycle by cycle behavior of segment, segmental central pattern generator networks in the spinal cord. Currently, he is working on an implantable device that perform intraspinal microstimulation to mitigate spinal cord injuries. An integrated wireless uh, wearable 
physiological sensor to track the health cardiac, cardiac patients after admission, as well as an ultrasonic imaging system and activated catheters for infertility treatment, among the many other uh, exciting projects. Dolph's activities actually has gone well beyond his groundbreaking research. Um, he's a former is the former and founding director of the John Hop Johns Hopkins University Institute of Neuromorphic Engineering. Including, uh, he's contributed to, is also uh, contributed to numerous uh, technological firms, including Nova Sensors, Innovative Wireless Technology, Singular Computing, Panasonic, North, uh, North America Corporation, Avago, Micro uh, Technologies, <coughs> and so on. He was also a visiting scientist at Lawrence Livermore, Livermore National Laboratory, a visiting uh, African scholar at University of Cape Town in South Africa, and is also an eminent visiting professor at University of Western Sydney in Australia. His out outreach and service to the community are equally impressive. He was the associate director of the education and outreach of the National Science Foundation, sponsored engineering research center. He has served as chairman of the IEEE Circuits and Systems Technical Committee on Sensory Systems and Neural Systems. He was elected as member of the IEEE Circuits and Systems Board of Governors. He was also the general chair of the IEEE Biocast Conference in 2008 and of the flagship conference ISCAS in 2017 and served on several steering committees. He also serves on several editorial boards, including being the topic editor of the IEEE Sensors uh, Journal, his deputy editor in chief of the IEEE Transaction of Biomedical Circuits and Systems, associate editor of the MDPI Journal on Low Power Electronics and Applications, Frontiers of Neuromorphic Engineering, and the Institute of Physics, Science, Neuromorphic Computation and Engineering. He won numerous awards. Let me just mention a few. Is the recipient of the National Science Foundation Career Award and Office of Naval Research Young Investigator Program Awards. In 2010, he received the jo uh, Johns Hopkins you know, uh, Applied Physics Lab, RW Hart Prize, of best for best R&D project in development. He also won several publications awards, including the 2012 most outstanding paper of the Journal of Transaction and Neural Systems and Rehabilitation Engineering, the 2011 best paper award for the IEEE Transactions of Biomedical Circuits and System, and the 2003 best paper award of EUROSIP Journal of Applied Signal Processing, best demonstration. Ralph also has been recognized for his activities in promoting participation of women and minorities in science and engineering, engineering and mathematics. He recognized as a science maker, as part of the History Makers, an African-American history archive. At Johns Hopkins University, he has won multiple discovery awards for his research and was recognized as part of the indispensable roles of African-Americans at J. Johns Hopkins University exhibit. He was also elected to the Homewood Academic Council in 2021. <clears throat> I could go on, but I'm afraid I'm running out of time. So just let me conclude by saying I feel so honored to be part of this celebration and to be actually Ralph PhD advisor. I'm glad I listened to my colleague Zora Prabi when I uh, was thinking about admitting Ralph to my group. I think Ralph has succeeded in all aspects in terms of scientific contributions, in terms of his engagement in the academic and professional community, his commitment as an advisor to his students, as well as his administrative role as department chair, and more recently as vice provost at one of the world's most prestigious universities, Johns Hopkins University. Congratulations. You make me proud. You make your students, your colleagues and family very proud. Thank you.
and now I would like to invite Rolf to give a couple of words, say a few words. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for coming. Um, you know, I'm sitting there and I'm feeling that this is not me, right? You know, there's, you know, a few things definitely that I've accomplished in the past, but, um, you know, all this is not possible without, you know, without the community, without uh, all of you. But um, so anyway, let me start by first thanking the Smith family for, um, you know, the generous support of uh, the School of Engineering and, in fact, the uh, Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering. So I'm so honored to be uh, the third recipient, I think, of this chair, um, because the first two people before me was Fred Jelinek and um, Henry Kamansky, two giants, giants in the field of, um, you know, of uh, speech processing and natural language processing. So chat GPT that we've been hearing so much about would not exist if it wasn't for these two folks, right? So I'm coming about it in a different way. I'm coming about it from the perspective of what can we do to build machines that would be more human-like in the way that they process information as opposed to um, the signal processing and information processing side of things. But, but it's, it's amazing that, um, you know, that I have had the opportunity to step in their shoes. Um, and that's just a high honor that um, I cannot um, <clears throat> adequately articulate. Um, so um, I'm hoping very well that I'll be able to um, you know, uphold what they've done you know, some the event and, and you know, to live up to, uh, to their name. Um, I would also like to thank uh, um, uh, Sunil uh, um, and Ed um, uh, Schertzinger for not even nominating me for this chair. You know, without you guys, you know, I would not be standing here talking. Um, but uh, Provost Kumar, um, I've only worked with you for a few months, uh, seven months, and I cannot express kind of the gratitude that I've had, you know, working with you and seeing what, how you do things and understand how a sage and the thoughtful individual you are. If I can just be a fraction as good as you are, I, will, I would have accomplished a lot in life. And same uh, with um, Ed, um, with uh, Dean Schlesinger. I know you've always been a supporter and I continue to depend on that support. Thank you so much for it. And I look forward to continue to contribute to the excellence of the, School of White, uh, the Whiting School of Engineering and hope to continue to do this. Um, all my EC colleagues, you know, I cannot say enough right um, you know we heard um, professor uh, Iglesias talk about you know when I when I interviewed I remember it I remember going to his office and talking about helicopters right back then you were doing controls of helicopters this was pre pre um, pre drones right so and in fact I think you were like controlling like actual helicopters not not quadcopters so it was really hard um, and we talked about these things and um, and I'm just happy uh, to have been part of the, uh, of the department and 25 years later and the only reason that it's possible 25 years later is because I'm you know, surrounded by colleagues and friends uh, who have made it easy right I mean it's been a very nice genial and uh, department that has made it possible for me to pursue the things that I find interesting and 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 made it happen um, so the collaborative nature of the, uh, of the environment is, has been super, super, super important. And that's the one thing that I've depended upon in order to be able to be successful. So thank you so much for that. Um, and now as we, um, you know, as, as you know, the, the, the tripartite um, mission of any department is education, research, and, um, and service. But now as we're moving towards um, translation, it's like Professor, um, uh, Provost Kumar talked about, I'm um, hoping that I can be as well, you know, a player in that arena and, and, and you know, participate in that process. Um, you know, all of this is, could not be possible without my family. And um, I'm just so happy to have my mom, my son, my wife, um, uh, my undergraduate professor, as well as my uh, graduate professor here with me. And I count all of these folks as family because I've developed and grown with them, you know. Um, so my mom, um, you know, has been probably the most important supporter throughout my life, right? I mean, she started, you know, uh, my educational pathway uh, when I, you know, I grew up in, in a small country in the middle of the Indian Ocean, the Seychelles. Um, and when I was four, uh, she had to go to the UK to 
to, um, you know, to work in order to send me to school, right? And that kind of, you know, dedication to, uh, you know, to education is not, is, is, does not go unrecognized. Thank you, mom, for, for doing all that. <laughs> Um, and now she continues to be with us. Uh, she works, uh, you know, she comes down to DC four days a week, you know, helps to, uh, you know, to raise my son, because I know that if it wasn't for her, both my wife Shimita and I would not be able to do what we do professionally. I mean, we are, you know, always on the go, but mommy is there to, you know, to keep us, uh, you know, to keep things going. So, you know, always appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um, I am also grateful to my, um, uh, to my stepdad, Herman Cummings, that's where the Cummings, so my name comes from, um, who uh, was a Air Force uh, intelligence officer who basically brought us to this country when I was uh, 18, going to university. And he had gone to uh, Lincoln University, a, a HBCU, um, and uh, he encouraged me to go to, um, to Lincoln. And there I met one of the most influential persons in my life as well, which is Professor Hurd sitting there, I've been heard, uh, where I took his um, uh, modern physics course first year. And at that time, he pulled me into his lab and says, I've got some chemistry for you to do, basically. <laughs> so he was working on, um, on electrochemistry. We were trying to understand the interface of how silicon interacts with water and with, with KOH and do etching and, and these kinds of, which is kind of the beginning of the VLSI trajectory, right? So that was the first place where we were doing passivation of of uh, semiconductors and so on. So through, but through that work, um, you know, is where I, I basically started thinking about going to grad school in engineering. I remember, the, you know, he took me to the first conference I ever went to. I went to New York City, went to uh, the um, American Physical Society conference. Big conference, you know, I'm walking around like this, looking at buildings. And I remember him telling me, Ralph, 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 you may not want to look like a tourist too much. <laughs> <laughs> this is New York City and it's 1986, you know. <laughs> so it's, uh, you know, it's a different, uh, different domain. But uh, yeah, he has been, you know, just completely, you know, influential in where I've been. Um, and there at that conference is where I learned about you know, solitons and, um, and uh, fiber optics, which basically leads very nicely into this particular chair, right? Which is about, you know, uh, Julian um, S. Smith worked on uh, communications, worked on, um, you know, devices. Uh, and this is where kind of, you know, for me, the trajectory started from, you know, at that American Physical Society meeting in New York. And from there, I went to Penn. And when I went to Penn, I was, you know, going to be a telecoms guy. You know, that's where I was going to be because I had gone to, you know, <laughs> to learn about telecoms. And I was going to go to Seychelles and I was going to, you know, revolutionize the telecommunications industry in the Seychelles, right? So then I walked into, um, you know, Professor uh, Van der Spiegel's uh, introduction. Uh, and I think it was the first day I walked on campus. And he was talking about, you know, how the brain is this computer and how we can learn from, from, from the, the brain and build computers that's gonna change the way we think about the world and everything changed for me. That moment, it was like, wow, that's what I wanna do. Not this, that. You know, so that's uh, where I got uh, you know, involved with uh, Professor um, Van Spiegel. And on top of that, I also met this other gentleman that was working with, uh, with uh, uh, Professor Van Spiegel, who is uh, uh, Paul Mueller, who is a guy who was, at, you know, who had discovered the bilipid layers that forms the outer casing of, of uh, neurons and how to open the channels and close the channels and cause neurons to fire on the benchtop. It was the first example of an entire kind of electrochemical system where, you know, a bioelectrochemical system that was producing spike trains, you know, on the, you know, on the, um, on the desktop. And I was like, yeah, I want that. You know, I want to know how to do that. And then, of course, with the electronics, with the integrated electronics, um, you know, it became like a nice natural um, synergy that we were able to then build, you know, neural machines um, in silicon. And in fact, I would argue that some of the first deep learning machines that we that we hear about so much about now was actually built in a third floor room in the Moore School in the University of Pennsylvania because we had put together a large network. And large network there was what? 1,000 neurons. <laughs> you know? And now you're talking about like, 
you know, tens of millions of neurons, right? You know, what 1,000 neurons was the scale that that was, you know, that was a, the appropriate way. So, uh, so from there, you know, it led to my work in um, you know combining of neuroscience and electrical engineering, um, and everything that uh, we've heard, um, you know, uh, Professor Van Spiegel talk about um, has has led from there. So. You know, with all that, um, all that said, um, you know, it, it would be you know, remiss of me not to thank all my colleagues. You know, um, I see a lot of folks sitting here. I see Sanjeev, I see Andreas, I see um, Ernst. Um, you know, who am I missing? I, I see some other folks that I've worked with. Um, and, and these folks have been crucial to, you know, to creating the right envi environment for, for one to succeed. Um, and, um, you know, there are folks like, um, like Nitish Nit Nit Thakur, who's not here, who has been also very important in my development. Because when I first came on campus, he was one of the first people who took me to the side and said, all right, let's talk about what, you know, what the, the next grant should be and what we should be applying for. And that kind of mentoring is so important for a young faculty walking on campus for the first time. And I'm hoping that, you know, I can be that kind of person to people as well. And, you know, with Jeremy Brown sitting over there, I hope that I can be, you know, as, as, as uh, instrumental in your growth and so on in the same way. So those are the kind of things that I value. Okay. Um, uh, and of course, none of this would not, it would, would, would be impossible if it wasn't for my wife. I know she always tells me, you know, you got to remember to thank your lovely wife. Well, I'm thanking my <laughs> lovely wife. <laughs> no, she has been, you know, this, um, you know, this incredible partner for the last 30 years. And um, all the way through, she's made it possible for me to kind of pursue all the things that I find interesting, right? I mean, work, fun, you know, and like, uh, so I have a, a line here that says, you know, thank you for, you know, for first giving us our neuromorph, you know, which is Blaze, you know, our child. <laughs> and second is for allowing me to, you know, to focus on work when I need to. And then also for me to go fishing, biking, you know, scuba diving, <laughs> and all these things when I need to, because these are the kinds of things that makes it possible to have a kind of well-rounded life, and, and, and I enjoy that. Um, and thank you so much for doing so. So um, to conclude then, um, I, I, would, I would say the following, you know, thank you again to the Smith family for making this kind of, you know, honorific uh, um, possible. Um, thank you to the leaders again of the, of the school for, uh, and the university for, uh, for providing the opportunity for folks like me to succeed. Um, and most importantly, thank you for coming to celebrate with us. You know, there's food outside, by the way, you know, so, you know, <laughs> and drinks so we can hang out. Um, and I hope to continue working on the kinds of things that I've been doing under this, um, this guidance in, in the sense, you know, the brain, uh, the brain like computation stuff that I've talked about. I want to, you know, we're continuing. I see my students sitting there and, they, and they're working on different aspects of that. We're trying to build, you know, parts of the hippocampus on silicon. We're trying to build uh, machines that can see better. We're trying to build machines that can learn better and all these kinds of things are things that's going on right now in the lab, um, as well as medical devices that will hopefully, you know, be able to detect mental states when folks are coming from, uh, from um, a coma and recovering from, deep, uh, from uh, deep brain trauma and how does, uh, how does one determine the likelihood of them recovering from injuries and so on. So all of this is the kind of thing that's going on in my lab. So thank you so much for your attention and thank you for coming to, uh, to celebrate this with me. <laughs> For all the flowers, so we're going to have. Official <laughs> so, to officially install you oh, as thank you so much. Smith chair. <laughs> thank you so much. Congratulations. Wow. So, so I'm, a, I'm a soccer fan, as you know. So, you know, usually when you have a, like, a, you win a tournament, you go pick up the, the cup. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs>
Celebrate and indeed, there is refreshments to uh, allow us to continue the celebration in the, in the atrium. Thank you all very much. Thank you again. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.